In a previous video, we have put together a game where you can drag elements into an image sprite and then register them as molecules. In this video, we want to activate the guess button so that a molecule name will appear across the top and then we have to grab the elements, put them into the molecule box, and then hit guess and see if we're correct. So for this, we need to implement an event handler for the guess button. So I'm going to choose BTN guess and I'm going to say when BTN guess clicked. First, let's just make sure that we can read from the database. So the database is called molecule. We're going to want to take a value out of that and store it into a variable. So I'm going to grab a local variable. Okay, and we will call this one uh, molecule. I feel like I keep reusing that word. So let's say red molecule. And then we want to initialize that to whatever's in the database. Now, in this example, I've already saved water into our database. So I'm going to grab a molecule, and I'm going to say get value. Okay. And I'm going to hard code it for now, uh, but eventually we're going to want this to be more flexible. So I'm going to go up, and I'm going to grab the text, and I'm just going to use that literal name water. Okay. Now, if you remember what we did, if we look up at our save button, we're taking the text that the user enters into the molecule name box. We're using that as a tag. Now, what are we saving? We're saving the list of elements that we've been accumulating as users drag elements into the molecule box. So you see, each time the user drags an element into the molecule box, we, uh, we save it to a list called global molecules. Okay, so we're saving that entire list of global molecules into our database along with a tag that simply names what the molecule is. So now what we're doing on the guess, just as a proof of concept, is we're dragging back out of that database the element water, and then we're going to iterate over the list that's associated with the cell, with, I'm sorry, molecule water. We're going to iterate over the list that's associated with this molecule water, and we're simply going to print out each element in a notifier. So that's just to make sure that our save operation has worked successfully. So I go ahead and um, I am going to use a loop. So I go to control. Be, I'm, why am I using a loop? I'm using a loop because we're iterating over a list. Okay, that list is this thing called red molecule. Remember, that's what we're pulling from the database. And then I'm simply going to show a notifier that's going to show each element one at a time. Okay, so instead of cleared, we'll take that, we'll delete that. We're going to say item. Okay, so once again, pull from the database the elements that are associated with water, read them into a list, iterate over that list. Iterate means touch each element and, and do the same thing to it. Uh, okay, and what are we going to do? We're going to show it in a notifier. Uh, that's just the start. We have more to go, but this is just to make sure that that the application works as we think it does. So I scroll up a little bit and I say save. And now let's see what happens when I click on the guess button. I click on the guess button and we get hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen. And finally, what do we get? Oxygen. So we see sure enough for water, we're able to pull each element out one at a time. Okay, now it's important that I distinguish between the list that we're reading from the database, which is our persistent list, and also the list where we are saving items. Okay, that's just an in-memory list. Okay, so let's enhance this guess button a little bit. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is go back to designer view, and I'm going to add a fourth button. So let's see, I need to resize these a little bit instead of 30%. Uh, let's try and knock it down to about 20% per button. Uh, okay, so save, and then clear is going to be 30% as well. The new button is going to be one that just says new, to be honest with you. And that's going to read from the database, read all the tags out, pick one at random, and put it on top of our screen. And then our job is to try to guess the elements that make up that molecule. So I will grab a... A uh, new button, drag it over here. There we go, try to get it right in there. And for this one, we're going to call it BTN 
let's see, we'll rename and we'll call it btn uh, show new. Okay, uh, text. We're going to change the text to show another. It's kind of wordy, isn't it? Let's say show new. Okay, that'll work. That way, when we click on this button, it's going to read from our database, pull a tag at random, one of the molecules at random. It's going to show that molecule up here, and then we have to guess what it is. Okay, so let me go to the blocks view. And let's add a handler for this new button. Okay, when button show new, click. Okay, so we want to pick a random item from the database. Now let's take a look. If we look at our database, there's something called get tags. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take a look at lists and take a look. There's something called pick a random item list. So we could pick a random tag. Let me just drag this down, pick a random item list, and then let me go to our database and we're going to say get tags, which will come back to us in a list. Now what are we going to do with this? Two things. We're going to store it into a new global variable, and we're also going to change our label that's on the top of the screen to show this name. So let me go to variables and initialize global guess molecule to what? Uh, let's start it off just as nothing. So I'll initialize it because this is global. I just keep it kind of out here in no man's land here. Uh, initialize it to empty string. Now, in the button show new handler, let's go to variables, and we're going to say set, and we're going to pick that new global variable we just created called guess molecule, and we're going to set that to a random item in our list. Okay? Let me try to give us a bit more room here so we can see it all together. Okay, additionally, we are going to take this LBL molecule, and we are going to change its text to whatever the randomly selected element was. So set, set LBL molecule to, uh, one moment, the value of the guest global molecule. Now I paused the video and I went ahead and made a new molecule called carbon dioxide. Now the goal is we're picking a random item from a list and we're saving that into a variable. Uh, additionally, we are showing that variable in a label on the top of the screen. Because I have both carbon dioxide and water, when I hit show new, let me just back out of this just a second. When I hit show new, we should see the two of them appear at different times up at the top of the screen. So it might not be, you know, it might not be equal because it's random. So it's going to pick a different one of the two each time. But you see, sure enough, sometimes we get water, sometimes we get carbon dioxide. Uh, I could clear this out. We could make some new elements. Let's say I only set up a clear event on, on a few of the elements. So I could go ahead and drag in uh, one carbon, and I could drag in one oxygen, and we can make this carbon monoxide. like so, and then save that. And now what we'll see when we hit show new is that it'll iterate across carbon monoxide and then water and carbon dioxide. That looks like I might have overwritten. Oh, there we go. Okay, water and then carbon dioxide. So you see, now I have a total of three tags in the database, each associated with a list of elements, and we're pulling those out randomly. Okay, so what we need to do now is in this button show new we need to have it also take this tag get the list out of that tag and save that into a new global list and that global list is something that we will use to grade the user to say hey did you pick all of the correct uh, elements and when we when you were asked to guess this element so let me make a new global variable which is going to be a list so we'll say initialize global and we'll say something like answer key to, and then we'll simply say make a new list. Okay, now when the button show new, we're going to add a handler. We're going to say, uh, let's grab our variable, 
and we're going to say set what? Set global answer key to, okay, what are we going to set it to? We're going to set it to the list that's associated with this tag that we've chosen at random. So set global answer key to, uh, grab our molecule, and I'm going to say get value. Okay, uh, what value are we going to get? This uh, variable called global molecule, that's, that represents our tag name. Okay, now there we go. So again, what we're doing, we're picking a random tag, which is a random molecule. We're setting the text of the element to that random molecule. We're taking the individual element list of that molecule, and we're adding it to a global variable called answer key. Wow. Finally, with all of that, now we can fix our um, guess button. Instead of hard coding it to water, which is what we did before, just as a proof of concept, now we're going to use whatever tag was randomly selected in the show new. And remember, we're storing that in this variable called guess module, guess molecule rather. So I'm going to grab this guy, and I will drop him right here. Okay, so now the, the button guess is going to show us the element list for whatever molecule happens to be selected at random. Let's see how this works in our emulator. Uh, let me go ahead and save the project. Okay, and right now I have carbon dioxide, so when I choose guess, it should show us what is in carbon dioxide. Actually, let me cycle through again, give it a chance to reload the screen. Okay, water, guess, should be two hydrogens and an oxygen. So hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and finally oxygen. There we go. Let me show new again until we pick carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, and I'm going to choose guess, should be two carbons and an oxygen. So there's a carbon, there's another carbon, and there's our hydrogen. Oh, hydrogen. Whoops, that's not right, is it? Okay, so we might want to reset this one. Looks like that has some, some leftovers from before. No problem, though. That's easy to do. I simply clear out the list, and we can start that one over again. Not a problem. Um, so a little clear. Okay. Okay, make sure it's completely cleared. And then we can say carbon dioxide. And we can, yeah, so we can recreate this. Trust me, I'll do it off, I'll do it off screen, but uh, we'll see that this will get recreated. So in this video, we've seen how to pick a random item from a tiny DB database. And when that item is associated with a value, which is a list, we've seen that we can iterate over that list and we can show the values. In the next video, we need to do something a little bit tricky, which is we need to compare lists. In other words, we have this answer key that we've read in from the database. We want to be able to compare that answer key with whatever the user drags into this image sprite and make sure that the user has dragged exactly every single element that should be uh, in that molecule. Not any more, not any less. So that's where we'll start with our next video. I look forward to seeing you then.